in 2005, I had just graduated college and I got this letter in the mail. It was from my dad. He was like, hey, just want to let you know your mom and I have been to the doctor and we've discovered that I have a terminal disease. And as soon as I got the letter, obviously I was just shocked and devastated, but I just immediately started praying for two things. I started praying that my dad would be able to be there at my wedding. And then I also started praying that um, I would be able to be there with my dad when his time on earth was coming to an end, just to say goodbye, you know, and, and be able to tell him I loved him. And so in September of 2011, my dad was there at my wedding, which was just amazing to have him get to walk me down the aisle and be there and be really present. Um, And then that next February, so just a couple months later, I got the phone call from my mom and she said, hey, I think you just, I think you should come. Dad's in the hospital. And I got some time alone with my dad. And I just was like, man, dad, this is crazy looking back on an entire lifetime that you've lived. Like you, here you are at the very end. What wisdom do you have for me? And what insight can you give me for my life? And no pressure. (laughs) He was like, wow. (laughs) But he said, you know, Lindsay, everyone knows they're dying, but nobody thinks they're dying. As soon as he said that, it just reminded me of that verse, um, Psalm ninety twelve, which says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And I just really feel like my dad exemplified that. So I got to see him finish his race well. And um, he went to be with Jesus on February 15th of 2012. And um, I just count it such a privilege to have gotten to walk through that season, you know, with him and, and know too, that because of the hope that we have in Jesus. I know I'll see him again. I know that. Like right before I walked down the aisle, truly like 10 minutes before my mom came rushing over to me and my dad standing there in the back of the church. She was like, we forgot to do a seating chart. And she had this big <laughs> list and she was like trying to do a seating chart right before I walked down. I was like, mom, you know what? It's that's yeah, we People did. People will find we a forgot chair and a table. They're going to find their own table. It's going to be fine. She was like, are you sure? Like she had started doing the little circles at the tables and trying to write people's like off the top of her head, our guests of well, like. And then how are you going to decide like what's going to tell them where to sit? If yeah, you have it exactly. On? Well, we had bought numbers for the tables, but we had never done anything with them. So she's like, we're wasting the table numbers. I was like, yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, whoops. It's just not a big deal. I mean, now I'm like, it's funny when I think back on all those weddings that I was a bridesmaid in, not just even just attending, but mm-hmm. in the wedding, I don't remember really what kind of flowers they had mm-hmm. and I carried them. I don't remember really what kind of food everybody had. I remember mm-hmm. if, if if it was a beautiful, joyful day yeah. or if it was stressful. Really? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Those are the things that you remember. So it really helps me calm down and be like, all right, I just need to prioritize the biggest things to me that will, yeah. that will, I wanted beautiful flowers and I wanted my dad there, you know, yeah. like, and I wanted to get married. So <laughs> those things happened and I'm very thankful. And I don't think anybody remembers probably what we had at our wedding. We had barbecue for those people who are listening that <laughs> have forgotten how awesome it was. <laughs> 